Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb with RIA Network, and today we're with Jason Bonarigo of RMS Mortgage, and we continue to talk about the buying power checklist that we give to all of our buyers about how to make their offer more competitive in this competitive marketplace. To that point, today we're talking about appraisal gap coverage. Now, we've talked about waiving an appraisal, yep. so which has a lot of risk to a, to a buyer. Yep. Sellers love it. They love it. Absolutely love it. So an appraisal gap coverage is that middle ground. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so appraisal gap coverage is ultimately where when we as the, you know, was we submit our offer to, to the to the sellers, okay, um, we say if there is a gap in the appraisal of the first, let's say 20000 so the property under agreement for 500000 and the appraisal comes in at four eighty, and we have appraisal gap coverage of $20,000, then we're saying to the seller, hey, look, the first $20,000 of an appraisal issue, we're taken care of, which... A lot of times we can just move some numbers around on the spreadsheet, right? Sure, sure. It works like that. And obviously the, the important, the reason that's so important too, and for those of you who don't know, is at the lenders go off the lower of the two values. So right. if the contract price again is 500 and the appraisal come back to 480, we need, we're going we're to have to go off the 480 based on your down payment, your loan to value and your, uh, and your equity position. So that coverage is, is massive and making that seller feel okay with it too. Right. And so what I think is great, um, and you know, as when we're working as a team, because in this market, it takes a team in order to get an offer accepted. True. Um, and we have specific numbers in play. A buyer could actually call you and say, okay, Jason, the property is for 500000 That's what we're putting the offer in. How much could we put in appraisal gap coverage where it wouldn't change our rates or our program or anything? And you could actually give them a firm number. No? Okay, I yeah. can. And again, we talked about this in, in, in a, a similar video, but just it really depends on the buyer, right? If they're putting 5% down or 3% down, there might be a different conversation. Right. Uh, but if they're putting 20, 30, 40% down, um, then well, then obviously the conversation changes well, too. And, then, even, and I can tell them that number and have some flexibility with that. Right, but not even 30 or 40% down. The, the buyer who's putting 17% uh, down, yes. right? Yeah. The, the, seven, the difference between 10% and 17% is absolutely They can nothing. just click down to that next bracket, which right. will be 15% down or 10% down. Right. I would just run the quick PMI numbers, uh, let them know if it changes their rates, which it usually doesn't, and then right. we kind of have a comfortable number going forward. It's so to the same point. Like I, I, even somebody putting 8% down, instead maybe they're putting 5% down, yeah. okay? they If it was a $500,000 purchase, they just found an extra 15 grand, quote unquote, in the deal without changing a single thing. Exactly, and we could still do it. It's when you right. start to get a little bit short of that 5% number, that's when things get, get funky. Right. But you're true. If you have that, that capital or even some reserve that, hey, you don't have to put down every dime for your down payment, you're saving that if you have to bring the difference. And that's when the appraisal gap coverage is, is huge and explaining that to the seller so you have a confident deal going in. Right. And it's important to, to know that everybody's situation is different. Of course. So, you know, there is no broad brush stroke that we're talking about here. And that's why they really need to ultimately reach out to you and talk to you about their specific situation and what can they do in order to make their offer more competitive. In conjunction with their realtor, because right. obviously what we're trying to do is make you as strong as possible in this competitive market. Right. So the more that you're communicating with your team, right, whether that's your attorney, your lender, and your realtor, that's the key. Hey, what are we trying to do? How are we looking? What markets are we in? And how much over asking are we trying to do? Do we have an escalation? clause, things like that. But if everyone's on the same page and you're communicating, you have a much stronger chance as about go, going in blind. Right? right. And that's why, so just, just for you to know, I mean, that's why I, as a real estate agent, I always prefer the appraisal gap coverage over just waiving the appraisal because waiving appraisal, there's a lot more risk. You, have more you know, protection. from an appraisal gap coverage perspective, sure. we know the exactly how much, right? And we can prepare for that. Right. Um, right. Versus when you waive an appraisal, you get a bad appraisal. That's you're, it. You're there's really to, no recourse. Yeah, right? there, you, you don't zero. have to protect it because yeah. you've essentially waived it, and that's part of the contract, which Absolutely. is huge. Yeah. So, well, sh should you have any additional questions about appraisal gap coverage, or really any questions in regards to how to make your offer more competitive in this competitive market, you can reach out to Jason Bonarigo. Jason, how do they reach out to you? Cell phone uh, 617 413 5038, or send a text. And he works with RMS Mortgage, and I'm Jeff Chubb. Uh, my team, the Chubb Homes team, we're brokered by eXp Realty. You can reach us at 617 480 or you can reach us online at boston2.com. Thanks for watching. We look forward to hearing your questions and look forward to chatting with you soon.